This episode of the Demonic Compendium contains spoilers for the following games. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to a draining new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. 2017 was a great year for the show, and my dream is to keep things going strong into 2018. So I think it's best if today we talk about a demon known for visiting dreams. So hold on to your essences, cause today, we're talking about Lilim. Lilim stem from Judeo-Christian mythology as the children of Lilith, the original wife of Adam. The story goes that after Adam and Lilith split up after their, <clears throat> argument that I'll get into when I do an episode on Lilith, she left the Garden of Eden and started just having a bunch of babies. God sent three angels after Lilith to bring her back, and when she refused, the angels said they would kill 100 of her Lilim children every day she did not return. Lilith was able to strike a deal where she didn't have to come back, so long as the Lilim did not attack any children under angelic protection. But it still resulted in the death of 100 Lilim every day. I'm not sure what the statute of limitations was on that deal, but if that's still going on, that is a lot of dead children. It's said that Lilim visit the dreams of men at night, having sex with their sleeping bodies while draining them of their life essence. If this sounds even remotely familiar to you, it's probably because at some point in your life you've heard of a succubus, the tale of which supposedly stems from the original Lilim. The myth also spread to Greece where Lilim became known as Empusa, which is an entirely separate demon in the series. Lastly, very similar beings known through Mesopotamian and Jewish lore are known as the Lilin and their basically the exact same thing. Many of Lilim's compendium entries discuss their relation to their mother, and a few discuss the Impusa myth as well, but her entry from Persona 5 refers to them as a demon who tempts sleeping men and attacks infants. She is the daughter of the demoness Lilith. Like her mother, she drains men of their essence. Throughout the franchise, Lilim has had two major designs. The first one originally appearing in Shin Megami Tensei portrays Lilim as a somewhat younger girl with long wavy hair and a white onesie. Kaneko has openly admitted that this design was meant to have some resemblance to Succubus given the inspiration in their mythological background. Aside from having typical demonic features like a devil tail and bat-like wings, there's not much tying this design to its mythology. Lilim's other frequent design still wears white, though in the form of booty shorts and a fairly confusing top. I mean, just functionally, I don't get that shirt. It has slightly tanner skin and shorter black hair. This is my preferred design of Lilim, and not just for the obvious reasons. The change in hairstyle and color makes me feel like effort was placed into creating something more of a familial resemblance to her mother, as well as the visible snake tattoo on her thigh as an obvious nod to her Judeo-Christian roots. While both designs get used fairly regularly, a fact worth noting about the second design is that it does not appear to have come from Kazuma Kaneko. While the first in-game appearance of this design was in Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzunoha vs. King Abaddon, it was showcased in the manga series Shin Megami Tensei Gaiten Hato no Senki, which was handled by Shinsu Ueda and came out several years before her debut in Devil Summoner. As far as game history goes, Lilim has had a handful of roles in many different series, from Shin Megami Tensei, Devil Summoner, Persona, and the list goes on. Lilim is an incredibly useful persona to obtain in the first Persona game, as it drains nearly all magic in exchange for physical weakness. This makes Lilim a very useful persona to give to the protagonist during the Alaya Caverns dungeon. There is also a very powerful level 99 boss Lilim that appears on the 12th floor of the Mikage Ruins. In Persona 3, Lilim makes for a very good early game persona, as she has a decent magic stat and is capable of being easily fused to have all four main elemental attacks in her moveset. Fusing a pixie with a Nekomata to create Fornius, followed by fusing that Fornius with an angel, should create the proper Lilim. She's also one of the required demons to create Alice down the road. In Persona 5, Shadow Lilims are known as the Woman Who Brings Ruin, and a mini-boss Lilim appears during the Star Confidant side quest, upstaging the Stage Mother, as Hifumi's controlling mother Shadow takes the form of Lilim in Mementos. Which strikes me as a bit odd, you'd think the mom would take the form of Lilith, but here we are. In Shin Megami Tensei 3, Nocturne, Lilim is one of a handful of demons capable of evolution, as when its moveset is maxed out, Lilim will literally become her mother by turning into Lilith. Lilim can evolve as early as level 12, but makes the largest jump in the game by turning into a level 80 demon, 
meaning the Demi Fiend must be at least level 76 before this can happen. A horde of Lilim appear as minions of the Black Samurai in Shin Megami Tensei 4, where their devilish charms will completely incapacitate Flynn, Walter, and Jonathan, but not Isabeau. Hmm. This particular horde is fitting given the true identity of the Black Samurai, Yuriko, who turns out to totally be Lilith. Both versions of Lilim appear in the MMO title Shin Megami Tensei Imagine, with the original design appearing in most cases, but a special fusion plugin can be earned to unlock the second design, which is referred to as Lilim the Little Demon. And as I mentioned in the Jiboku episode, Lilim in Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzunoha vs King Abaddon, has a comedic sexual conversation with the old tree, where her promiscuous intentions end up scaring him off. Oddly enough though, Lilim has never had a conversation with her mother, Lilith, despite them often appearing in the same games. Lilim has appeared in both Devil Survivor titles, and while never had much of a major role in either game, played a part in the Devil Survivor 2 anime, being one of the preferred demons of Hinako Kujo. Lilim has been a pretty recurring demon for the franchise, branching out into many of the games, whether in her original design or as the Little Demon, and I think we'll be seeing more of her in the future. In fact, I know we will, because we can clearly see Lilim the Little Demon in that first teaser for Shin Megami Tensei 5. So we know she'll at least be there. And hey, let me know which version of Lilim you like best in the comments below. And so there you have it, Lilim, the lustful little Lilith who loves to lull you to sleep and latch on. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.